This is a tutorial on standard taper ground glass joints. Standard taper is represented by an S with a T over top and it's a 1 to 10 taper. In this example we have an outer and this is an inner and they are ground to such a standard so that they fit and uh, make an airtight liquid tight seal. The 1 to 10 taper refers to the angle at which these are ground to. You'll see in the catalogs where they'll have an S with a T and they'll also have a two number designation. The numbers are in millimeters and refer to, the first number refers to the widest portion of each of these joints. The widest portion of this outer joint is the opening at the top. The widest portion of the inner joint is at the top here. Those numbers have to be the same, in this case is a 2440 so that they, they will fit together. It may be a little difficult to measure with a ruler. Uh, there is another way of measuring. A better way to measure these joints, at least for a demonstration, is to use calipers. The two numbers that are designating these joints, 24, the second number being the length, and it's 40 millimeters. The industry standard is plus or minus, so if you refer to the company catalogs, they'll give you the uh, designation of, and you, you get pretty close. It's certainly not going to vary that much from the common items that are sold. <coughs> it's being a 1 to 10 taper, you can show that by... <coughs> I'll show this on the inner joint. For every 10 millimeters to go down the joint, the diameter reduces one millimeter. So if this is 24, 10 millimeters down is 23, another 10 millimeters down is 22, 21, and down to 20. It's helpful to know that if you're designing an apparatus, and you have to put a sample down here or, or something of a certain size. You want to know what the opening is down here to see if, you know, and to know if your, your object or sample or whatever it is, is going to pass through there. So knowing that, you know these 2440s, 1 to 10 taper, 24, and this is going to be 20 down here. And you can use that for all the variety of joints that are available. That's a and this is a full length joint, the 2440 full length joint. And this is a 2942. For this joint, it's 42 millimeters long. You know the diameter is going to reduce one for every 10. So 42 is actually going to be 4.2 millimeters smaller diameter here than here same with here. So you know the opening down here is 29 minus 4.2, which is 24.8. This is a 1938 and this is a 1435. Full length joint. They also have what we call medium length joints. This is a medium length joint. It's a 24 25. 24 is still the diameter at the top. The length is 25 millimeters instead of 40 millimeters. If the first number is the same, you know that, and the taper is the same, you know these will fit together. And you can see where they fit. Uh, and the only thing that there's only 25 millimeters extending down into this outer outer joint <coughs> and conversely you see where this one sticks out a little bit longer but they are interchangeable and they will work together that's a 2425 2926 1922 and a 1420 they also make specialty sizes for different applications. This is a 2425. 
standard tapered joint. No, pardon me, 2412. 24 still the same. The first number still the same, so that it'll fit other. A 2425 will fit in there, and a 2440 will fit in there. It's just the length of this is different. When using these joints in the lab, it is highly recommended not to use these without some kind of interface in between the inner and outer joint. If you use these dry under certain conditions, these can get very, very stuck and cause lots of problems. So it's recommended that you use some kind of a grease between the two joints. If grease is not preferable or um, not compatible with your experiment, then there are some other products that you can use. This is a Teflon sleeve, and it is. these are made, in this case, for 2440, and they make them for all the other sizes as well, and they fit in like that, and it still makes an airtight, liquid-tight seal. Uh, these are reusable. You can clean them and reuse them again. Uh, they're a bit, bit more expensive than this alternative, which uh, is a little small Teflon ring, and it comes in a pack of 50. And these are applied like this. You slip this on, and you'll slide up one single ring onto the inner joint. And then when you place that inside the outer joint, it does flatten out and still makes an airtight, liquid-tight seal. It does allow it to rock a little bit, so you can hear that, and you can come apart. So one of those methods is uh, definitely preferred rather than using it dry. Now you may want to hold these joints so that they don't come apart. There are a couple of options. One is you can get these plastic cut clips and they are specific to the size joint that you have. Not so much the length of the joint, but that first number, the diameter at the top of the connection here. And they will fit on and clip on just like that. Of course, this is sensitive to temperature being plastic. There is another method, which is kind of a, a bit of old school. What we'll do, the glass blower will do on each connection is we'll put these glass hooks in such a position and then they can fit together like this and then with wire or in this case springs you can put that on here and that holds it together and it does not get affected by temperature just have to be careful in handling occasionally these get bumped and they snap off 